Veteran Dustin Hopkins has this one teed up, and we are underway here in Cleveland. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. The Chargers coming out to take over, and it is Justin Herbert at quarterback CD, now in his fifth NFL campaign. And he's looking to bounce back after an injury-riddled season a year ago. Herbert, obviously one of the most talented quarterbacks in the league, but that doesn't do you any good when you're standing on the sidelines wearing a baseball cap. If this team's ever going to reach their full potential, they've got to find a way to keep him upright. And with his new head coach, Jim Harbaugh, in the fold, they'll do exactly that. They'll have a chance to win a lot of games with Justin Herbert on the field. A play fake, and now Herbert to throw. Now he steps away. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. He'll get 10 there all on his own, but it'll be second down. This early in the game, it's all about making steady progress downfield, hoping to lead to early points. And you can do it with your actual play calls or sometimes something a little more improvised, as we just saw there. Justin Herbert looking to pass. Short throw underneath to Hurst. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you get a heck of a tight end candidate. It'll go as a gain of four, and that will bring up second down. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran it a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line, but once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. And that'll be off the mark, too far out in front, and it's incomplete. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven-on-seven seven in practice, or maybe even routes versus air, because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. Herbert throwing again. Buying time to his left. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. Give him seven on the tuck and run, and it'll get him a new set of downs. He's a talented runner, and that means he's always looking for bigger and bigger gains when he takes off. Certainly found some bonus yards there beyond the first down marker, and this early drive will continue with that extra jolt from his legs. Herbert. Short throw to Disley. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. That's good for a first down, his second catch of the opening drive. And it's a real luxury when you have a guy who can turn a short throw into a solid gain at any moment. Once he caught that ball, he ID'd where the open grass was and got there in a hurry to pick up a new set of downs for his offense. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now, down at the 33. A collegiate star here in the Buckeye State. It's J.K. Dobbins. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten coming up. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because really they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 18. The Chargers passing game rolling a bit here. They've got another first. What a drive this has been, just chewing up the yardage. And here's one of their best plays yet as they finally get down into the red zone and look to finish this off with six. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Play action this time for Justin Herbert. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. It's J.O.K. Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa in there for the sack. But defensively on the previous play, they gave up a pretty good chunk of yardage, but right there, they got a good portion of it right back. And if we just flip it around from the offensive perspective, took a nice step forward, 
And how about a couple of leaps backwards after that play? They've got to figure out a big call coming up here to try and gain that yardage back. An option handoff here to Dobbins. A strong broken tackle on that one. And then they get him to the ground just shy of the 15. Eight yards here, so that gets him back within striking distance. And now it's third down. They'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. From the gun, Herbert on third down. Right side, he has Johnston. And all the way down inside the five to the four. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Uh, that's a big conversion there on third down, and this has been a great opening drive. You know at this point, they'd hate to settle for three, but they've created a fresh set of downs and a first and goal. First and goal, a chance for an early statement here on the road. Now it's Herbert. And they're not able to hook up there, incomplete. A great job defensively taking away his receivers, and he was forced to put that one into Lake Erie, but that's what good quarterbacks do. They don't take unnecessary chances if they don't have to. Line of scrimmage, again the four-yard line. Second and goal. Dobbins is not going to get a whole lot. Maybe a yard down to the three. Call it a gain of a yard as they get a little bit closer here. It's third and goal. Driven it down the field nicely here on the opening drive, but now it's put up or shut up. No doubt about it, because to make that type of a drive and ultimately kick a field goal would feel very disappointing. But I'm just wondering, the head coach thinking, is this four down territory? Might he go for it? Dobbins once more, pushing for the end zone, but he's not going to get there. They stop him just shy of the goal line. He needed three, he got two. Now that'll set up an interesting situation here on fourth and a yard. Decision time, opening drive here, what would you do? There is no decision for me. I'm the visitor, I'm on the road, I've moved the ball downfield, I've got momentum, I'm going for it right here. Look at that play sheet, pick out your best play. And even if you don't get it, then your defense is going to have a really good situation on the other side. Exactly, and in fact though, I'm not even telling my defense to get ready. I'm telling them to get ready to celebrate because we're going to score. And all in all, a pretty decent opening drive, Charles. Pretty balanced. They had the passing game going and the rushing attack, too. I would think they have to be happy with that start because you get your ground game going, which means your offensive line and your runners are pretty happy, and then you get your aerial attack going as well, so your quarterback and receivers have smiles on their faces. Now both up to speed, awaiting their next possessions for this game. They can't wait to get started again. Here's Dicker now as he'll send this one away. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. So here are the Browns under head coach Kevin Stefanski. They'll be led out by their six foot four quarterback, the former number one overall pick in 2015, Jameis Winston. And we're talking about one of the league's true extroverts in the quarterback position. For better or worse, he's going to throw the ball all over the field. And that aggressive approach is one of the main reasons why they went after him in free agency. First carry for Nick Chubb. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. From the 33, here's a second and five. They run it again with Chubb. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Two straight runs of five yards, first and ten. But, partner, if the defense isn't going to adjust and they keep giving them those five, six, seven-yard runs over and over, 
They're likely to run it the whole way to the end zone. They'll be more than happy to take the yardage available and save some of their other plays in the playbook for another time. On first down, they'll run with Chubb. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. End result of that one, a nice four-yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play-action game. Or you can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feeling pretty good about your next couple of calls. Coming right, this is Chubb on the toss. Looking for a crease, can't find one. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. He couldn't get the edge there. It wasn't sealed, so maybe not all on the guy running the football all the time on those tosses and the pitches that go to the outside. No, not at all. I would agree with that totally because sometimes the defensive guys, they win the edge battle. And when they do that, there's no place for the running back to go, and especially for offensive linemen trying to get out ahead. But their footwork and speed is negligible on that play. No gain at all for the offense. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. I like the screen being called here early in the game, especially on the opening drive, because, Brandon, when guys come out of the locker room, especially those pass rushers, they are so amped up to get to the quarterback that you can use that against them, and a screen pass is a great way of doing it. A lot of teams against good pass rushing teams, they want to run the screen 10 to 12 times in a game. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Defensively, though, they had a chance there to hit him for a loss. Couldn't get it done. Looked like someone was able to knife into the backfield, but he wasn't able to get him down. But his compatriots, they were able to grab him at the line of scrimmage and not let him get any further downfield. In motion, the tight end. Second down, here's Chubb again. And a good run here as he'll rumble all the way down to the 40-yard line. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. How about this? They'll try the option. Left side. Flash the stick skills, but didn't get a ton from it. Stop short of the 35. Give him four yards there on the first down keeper. Well, if you're going to run the read option, typically, you've got to keep an eye on the defensive end. And what does that mean? What are you looking for with a defensive end? Well, you want to play off of what he does. If he collapses inside towards the running back, then you pull it and take it yourself outside in. If he stays outside, you go ahead and leave it with the running back. In this case, pulled it and got good yardage himself. And he'll be upended at the 33 following a gain of three. And guess what? It brings up third down. They'll come up now third and three. Now Winston. And he is caught, dances by him. And he's brought to the ground with another first down at the Chargers 15-yard line. Big yardage there for the Browns, 18. How about a nod to the sequence of plays they're putting together here. This has been death by a 1,000 paper cuts on this drive. But this is one of their best plays yet, and they're able to move it down into the red zone. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Up the middle, it's Chubb. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down, second and right at a yard. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. First down marker at the five. It's second and goal. In motion goes the tight end. Second down, here's Chubb again. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Three-nothing after one on EA Sports.
On to the second from Cleveland. It's the Browns in control of the football as they go to work on a first and goal. Chubb is into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. For as good as Nick Chubb is in the open field, he's every bit as good when they line him up down near the goal line. He's a speed back between the 20s, but a power back down close, and he forces his way into the end zone. Dustin Hopkins on now to add the extra point. And this is up and good to make it 7-3. So that one, a 13-play drive in total. And Nick Chubb, the one to finish it off as he does so with a touchdown run. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. The Chargers get set to go here for their second drive. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Now Herbert with it looking to pass. Pass hauled in by Johnston. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. A shotgun snap for Herbert. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. They went with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. This offense so far on third down, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. This will be third and five. Here's Herbert. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have the Chargers first down by about a yard. It's a gain of five on third and four. Well, you can absolutely feel the thought process there. They just gave up the touchdown. So in the huddle, they're telling each other, you don't want to give it back now on a three and out. Nice job of making sure that they wouldn't, and they pick up the first down. Now movement up front. I think they're going to get one of the Charger linemen. Now the offense knew it. They were already starting to walk back as that one is accepted. A false start backs him up five. First and 15. A handoff running left is Dobbins. And the running lane's non-existent in this first half as they'll stop him behind the line. Jeremiah Wusu koromoa Big impact play, a tackle for loss. I have a feeling they'll stay committed to running the football, especially on the early downs. They just haven't had a whole lot of success just yet. Throwing on second and long. Herbert. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. Miles Garrett credit him with a sack and it goes as a loss of six and when talking about the league's most dominant defenders Garrett's name always is one of the first ones to come up and for good reason he's the reigning defensive player of the year and he has a sight set on another big campaign. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Here's Herbert. 
Flushed out right. And they'll bring him down here up at about the 22-yard line. Only able to get back a yard for his efforts, and that leads us to fourth down. And, partner, I would guess that in his headset, he was hearing from his coach, it's third down, don't take a sack. And in this case, he's able to avoid the pressure and get out of there. He doesn't get the first down, but he does turn a possible loss into positive yardage. On fourth down, J.K. Scott ready to punt it away. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And the Browns will take over first and 10. The offense trots back out there. Let's turn our focus now to Nick Chubb. You see the numbers, all those carries. If you get that many carries in the drive, you better finish it with a touchdown. And, and he did. Yeah, and, and deservedly so, right? Because we've seen times like the Carolina Panthers, sometimes Jonathan Stewart to carry the ball the way down, and then Cam, he's such a great goal line runner, he'll carry it in. But in this case, though, that didn't happen. The fellow lugging the load, he's the one who got to reap the reward. Yeah, there was no touchdown vulture here. That's to the former Bronco, Jerry Judy. The result, only four yards there on the play. And that's going to bring up second down. Jameis to throw it. That's complete. It's Elijah Moore. His first catch, good for eight and a first down. To throw is Winston. Open man, he completes it to Judy. It'll go down as a gain of six, and that'll make it second down. Here's Chubb on the read option. And a good push up front, and he's able to navigate his way down inside the 30. 54 yards rushing for him now as he's run it 11 times. His first carry of their second drive, pretty solid. And, of course, remember back to their first drive, really strong throughout that one. Not only is he getting good blocking up front, but how about his vision to find the holes? And he's seeing things before they even open and hurtling through them. To the 27-yard line. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. Here's Winston. Pass complete to Judy on the out route. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets this down about the 21 or 22. They'll give him four yards there. And that'll lead here to a third down. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Winston. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a Browns first down. They needed three. He doubled that. He got six. <laughs> I got kicked out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations. But a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. I think we all suspected that they were going back to him after he found the end zone on his last carry, and they kept the positive momentum going there. Another nice run by him. Second down and four. And again, it's Chubb. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Nick Chubb with his second touchdown here in this first half. And they are able to add on to their advantage. 
So his strong first half continues as he finds the end zone here for the second time. And definitely good blocking at the point of attack. And you just have to love watching the way he can create space down near the goal line. And he's able to take it into the end zone. Here's Hopkins now for the extra point. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And Nick Chubb the one to finish it off as he does so with a touchdown run. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. Their deficit is 11, 14-3, and needing to get something going here as they come up on first and 10. They'll start on the ground with Dobbins. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Good yardage there on first down. Exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs. Keep the clock running. And if they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down play. More muscle up front for this second and two. They've got three tight ends out there. Here's a give to Dobbins running right. Loose inside the 30, and he will be taken down, but not before he gets this to the Browns' 22. A big play there for L.A., 41 yards. We've seen him break off a big run already in this game, and for a second, that one looked like it might be another. Yeah, I think that any defense would say, look, we can't let him get to the second level because sometimes he'll break off the big run on his own, but oftentimes you get additional blocking at the second level, which gets you deeper into the secondary. Quick throw here to Johnston. Give him maybe a yard, quite the opposite from the previous big gainer. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. From the 21, here's second and nine. A give up the middle to Dobbins. It's a four-yard pickup there, and it leaves him with third and five. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, a guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. And this offense on third down today, they've converted three out of five thus far. This will be third and five. Herbert now. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. That was well played, but that was also an example of a corner who understands his coverage, realized he had support behind him, and could be a little more aggressive in the shorter zone, and did exactly that, knocking that pass away. And his kick here is good. And a second field goal here cuts their deficit to 14-6 to now. So the margin shrinks a bit as back-to-back -back drives here for him in with field goals. Yeah, we know no one's turning down three, especially in the first half, but you've got to finish these drives in the end zone. That's got to be a priority. Nice to have a reliable kicker, but outside of his agent, you know you'd rather him kick one-pointers instead of three-pointers. So after the touchdown, here's Dicker out to kick this one off. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. The Browns offense and their star running back Nick Chubb getting set to take over once more. 
And as a play caller, when you've got a guy who's running like this, you lean on him and your offensive line. He's had big hole after big hole to run through in this first half. The Browns drive about to get started. And right now they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. A short gain of just over two yards as the first half clock dips inside of three minutes. Second and seven. Here's Chubb on the read option. It's a five-yard gain, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. They'll run for it. Here's Chubb. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. He needed a yard. That's exactly what he got. Earns him a new set of downs. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Winston now. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's more. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 13 yards to pick up there. Good for a Cleveland first. From the shotgun, it's Winston. And he'll go right back to Moore. Complete again. I think as he began this throw, you saw that the area was congested, but he has a lot of confidence in his arm, and he fits that one in there nicely. They pick up the catch. Not much yardage afterwards. Here now, second and four. Now Winston. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. A good job in coverage there. They took away his top read on the play, so he went through his progressions and ended up settling on his running back who scored on their last possession, but the coverage held. It goes incomplete. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. Jameis again. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. Here's Winston. Oh, and this one incomplete. The pressure got to him as he released it. And it's second down. Offense was moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they earned a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. Now is second and 10. Throwing, Winston. And that is incomplete nearly intercepted the free safety couldn't quite get his hands around it and it brings up third down not sure what happened there but he just didn't get the right read on the coverage that time pass wasn't where it needed to be and that'll send them back to the drawing board Winston from the gun on third down And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. For a big guy, Jameis sure can move. Did a nice job there picking up the first down with his legs. No surprise to see a sideline fired up by that big play. Heck, we're fired up, and we're supposed to be neutral. That's a quarterback putting his body on the line to fight and just barely get the first down. When he does something like that, it gets everyone ready to lay it all out there and try and match his intensity. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 17 seconds to go in this first half of action.
From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. To throw, Winston. That one thrown away from the pocket. The officials kind of looking at each other, but they'll say there was a receiver in the area, so no penalty, just an incomplete pass. Here's second and ten. Winston. Complete on the quick throw to Moore. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. Hopkins kick is good, and that will extend their lead here to 17-6. So a late three there, and that'll help as they head into the break. Talk about situational football and something they've worked on since the OTAs and mini camps the previous summer. They take care of the ball, get three points, knowing they're going to get the ball to start the second half. That's the old two-for-one special to finish things off. So barring a touchback, this likely the final act of the half as the kick is away. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. The final shot before the break for Herbert. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. So we are at halftime here on Halloween. As we'll send you down to Orlando, and we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. We saw a solid first half out of the workhorse, Nick Chubb. He had a nose for the end zone as he wound up with two touchdowns on the ground in those first two quarters. All right, Coach, thank you very much as we welcome you back for quarter number three. The Browns are going to get the second half kickoff, and they've got this lead as well as we are back and underway. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. The Browns' offense set to go to work to begin this third quarter. And they've got the lead, CD. What do you expect from them in this second half? Well, I like what they were able to do on the ground in the first half because they had a lot of success running the ball, and I certainly think we'll see more of that. But I'd keep an eye on that defense, and I think their coaches up in the box will do the exact same thing. If they start to see one or two guys start to creep towards the line of scrimmage, that'll be licensed to take some shots downfield. Now Winston. That's caught left side by Judy. And they're able to get this one across the 35. He continues to deliver a first down here. He had four catches in the first half, and this one number five. During the offseason, the Browns talked about becoming more explosive on offense, and they acquired Judy from Denver this offseason in hopes that he could be a major asset to their passing game. And here he is making his presence felt as he picks up a new set of downs for this offense. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it's second down. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. 
I think he's a little trigger happy right there, and it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. To the air again with Winston. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's brought to the ground with another first down at the Chargers 43. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. All right, let's just go ahead and walk through this one pretty easily, right? Blast off the line of scrimmage. Get downfield to a certain point, usually around 8 to 10 yards. Turn around and make sure the quarterback sees your numbers and set yourself up for the pass. A well-executed curl route by Charles Davis. They go up the middle with Chubb. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Second down, here's Chubb again. And the lane closes up quickly as he'll get about three down to the 38. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. He'll look to throw. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Finally hauled down for the first time this game. Multiple defenders in there to drop him. And on that one, the protection just broke down. You've got to have that leverage, don't you? We always talk about low man wins in the running game for an offensive lineman versus a defensive lineman. It's essentially the same thing in pass protection. Get lower than that defensive lineman so that you can keep your balance and keep him away from your guy trying to throw the football. And Bojorquez on to punt as he gets it away. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Now a look at the Chargers offense. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. And, Charles, they're certainly still right in this game, but they need that offense to wake up and in a hurry. Yeah, I like the way you put it. They certainly did seem to sleepwalk a bit in the first half. Now that their defense has done its job, it's their turn now to go out and try and get some points. Now Herbert with it, looking to pass. Short throw underneath to Hurst. So the completion good for six yards, and it'll be second down. And there wasn't much room for the big tight end to do much after the catch. But at least he was able to pick up a solid gain to help his offense continue to move in the right direction. From the 29, here's the second and four. Dobbins trying the left side. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he will be taken down, but not before he gets this to the Browns' 38-yard line. 93 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. What I continue to hear from running backs and offensive linemen is how often they're actually getting together to watch film so they can get in sync with each other, understand blocking patterns better, how running back likes to cut, what he wants to do. And, boy, it all came together on that one. That's one where they watch it and say, hey, we, we did everything we were supposed to do right there. That looked like the play we drew up and designed. And then we got to see it unfold in real time. And this time the yards won't come so easy as they'll, in fact, tackle him behind the line. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know what the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. They'll go again with Dobbins. Not much there. Maybe a couple as he's taken down at the 40. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game. And while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take them in short, steady bursts. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now it's Herbert. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Well, Zadarius Smith there getting in and bringing him to the ground. A third and long. You knew that he was going to throw it. He just couldn't find anybody to throw it to. 
Yeah, and it shouldn't have been a surprise, but that was perfect execution of their nickel defense. That fifth defensive back, the extra defender, he really tightened up things downfield in coverage, and they were able to get to him in the pocket. Here's J.K. Scott now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. The Browns offense and their running back getting ready to go back to work. And as we roll through some of the highlights, we see how crucial he's been to their success in this one. When he's in this type of a groove and his offensive linemen are creating running lanes for him, he can really put on a show, and he's done so here. The Cleveland offense ready to go. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there's not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. To throw again on second down, Winston. And he's got the hook up to Moore. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. On third down, it's Nick Chubb. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. Well, someone's been having a good game so far. And you know something? A lot of it's been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. They run again on first down, Chubb. And some room to roam now. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. 110 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. Yeah, another good run there. He's been such a big part of their success here this afternoon. And that last carry, it puts him over 100 yards now for the day. So from Charger territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 46. Working out of the gun, Winston. Looking for the out route, and he's got more. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. But that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. From the gun, it's a give to Chubb. And tough sledding. He'll get maybe a yard. Stop short of the 35. Whenever we talk about the best strong safeties, one word constantly comes up, and that's instincts. Being able to diagnose runner pass and make the appropriate moves. He crashed down hard there. He was ready for that running play. Third and inches, and they've got some extra beef up front. Three tight ends. And Chubb will try the middle here. Breaks the tackle. He's got room to run. Shrugs him off. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. That'll move the sticks for the Browns. A gain of 12. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? Jameis to throw it. And just not enough on the throw there. Down around his feet and incomplete. They had their backs up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple of more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. Third quarter action. Appreciate you joining us from Cleveland, Ohio. Second and ten. Play action now. Winston. 
Oh, and that'll be incomplete. Oh, he took a shot as he let that go. And it's going to bring up a third down. Well, what looked like a march to the end zone has hit a momentary roadblock with that incompletion. No need to panic. They just got to come up with a high percentage play call and see if they can get their offense back on track. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Off the play fake, Winston. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And this is where play action can be so effective. Your running game has been the driving force on this possession. So as a defense, you start shifting your focus towards stopping the run. But if an offensive coordinator sees that, he can take advantage and they get good yardage there. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. A give running right is Chubb. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Brandon, you're a big lover of music. How about what you just saw there? This is what I call playing the piano for a defensive lineman. The ability to move laterally up and down the line of scrimmage. How about the way he just flowed and got to the outside part of the field and made that play? Second down, here's Chubb again. And again, the run defense stout this time. He maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage, but no more. Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. That time they're able to bottle him up, but he's having a really nice game. I agree with that. Let's just go big picture, right? Every back that's in the Hall of Fame had carries where they didn't gain yardage or they lost yardage, but you stick with them, don't you? When they're having a good game, keep feeding them. to the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Jameis Winston taking it in from 11 yards out. And the Browns are able to widen their advantage. If you're going to play quarterback in the NFL, you've got to have great vision and you've got to remain calm when things break down in the pocket. Both of those traits were on display there. He surveys the situation, sees the middle of the field open, so he's just going to step up and take it himself. Very well done there. On is Hopkins now for the extra point. And the lead is up to 18 now. So that drive spans 13 plays. And in the end, the finishing touch, an 11-yard run. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. The Chargers offense now, they get set to head back on the field. And they have had their problems moving the ball through the air as we take you through some of the action from earlier. This secondary has played about as well as you can. Many times they've left this quarterback with nowhere to go with the football. The Charger drive about to get going. And here we are almost through three quarters of play, and this passing game still has not really found any kind of rhythm. Put it mildly because they're not even over 100 yards yet. And in today's NFL, where it's a pass-first league, that is quite surprising. Not many teams patient enough to stick with the run. Everybody wants to advance the ball through the air. They've got to get their timing back. Now second and nine. Herbert, short throw underneath to Hurst. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. That's a staple of this offense, drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. They'll try to run for it with Dobbins. 
And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. But it wasn't a goal line situation, but how about the goal line formation on third and short? They went in and went heavy. No surprise on who was going to get the football. How about the power exhibited there? Yeah, that was just put a hat on a hat, drive forward. Nice job to pick it up. And we're back now here in Cleveland. It's Charger football, but they trail here as we get going in quarter number four. Here's Herbert. Open man, it's Palmer. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. It's a gain of 11 and a first down L.A. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but... Certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out. And to that end, a nice pass play there to push things downfield. Yeah, and we know in this league, a loss is a loss, and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or, boy, something that feels a little bit cheap. He's got a man complete. Touchdown, Chargers. Josh Palmer. 52 yards. And the Chargers are finally into the end zone here in this fourth quarter. You've got to understand situational football because they're playing with the lead here late in the ball game. So the back defender has got to be as deep as the deepest receiver. Keep everything in front of you, rally up and make the play. Yeah, you would think they had the three-score lead. Now it's down to two, but three-score lead here late that they wouldn't give up a big pass play like that, but they did. And for the extra point, Cameron Dicker. And it is good. That cuts the lead now to 11, 24, 13 hour score. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it ends with a touchdown pass to Josh Palmer. Now, after the Dicker field goal, he's back out, ready to send it away. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. The home team's offense and their running back getting set for this next possession. And he has put in a full game's work and then some. Just an incredible performance on the ground to this point in the fourth quarter. The Browns drive about to get started. Now there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about... And a loose football! And picked up by the Chargers. And his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. Well, that takeaway, partner, right there, that's a combination of coaching execution and absolute belief because a lot of guys will look at the scoreboard and go ah this thing's pretty well done but they still thought to themselves if we can make a play we give our team we give our teammates a chance to win it and that's exactly what they did and now out on the field here comes los angeles they trail by two scores in the fourth and their defense did its job getting the fumble recovery and time to see what this offense has left in the tank And now, as with every potential turnover, they're going to take a second look at this just to make sure. Now, the question, was the knee, in fact, down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of the football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. The fumble on first down. Now here's second down. 
Here's Winston. Looking left side, that's caught by Moore. And he'll go out of bounds, it looks like, right at the 40. Seven catches for him now in this last one, a first down. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped, and that can turn into an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together, and he catches it and goes over the sideline. Here's Chubb on the read option. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. If you can keep getting gains like that, Charles, with the lead here in the fourth quarter, I mean, keep running it, right? No doubt about it, but what the offense coordinator has to do is understand they're going to continue to stack the line of scrimmage. What runs do you have in your arsenal that'll work against a stacked box and continue to move the ball? Winston now. This short pass into the hands of Njoku. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Now that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point that continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. Now Chubb running right. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Starting to become a tough spot for this defense. You're down fourth quarter, looking a little fatigued maybe on that side of the ball. Partner, we've seen this before, haven't we? Because every coach we've ever talked to says body language is important. And now you're seeing guys with their hands on their hips, they're bent over, hands on their knees. And the offensive guys are just saying, let's just keep running it at them. We've got them now. And he stopped after a gain of one. Not enough. Still a yard to go on third down. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. To throw is Winston. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Browns first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert there on third and one. Oftentimes, we think of those tough yards as grinding yards that a running back has to pick up. How about the tight end there picking up the first down in that situation? That's what he's there for, right? Big fella, get it to him. Let him fight off some people and pick up the necessary yardage. On first down, they'll run with Chubb. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. And this is why aggressive defensive coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D linemen to make the play. This drive's taken more than three minutes off the clock already as they come up on second down. Now Winston. Six yards there off the scramble, but it'll still leave them with a third down. The plan was clearly to challenge them by sending a blitz on second down, but even the extra guys couldn't catch him in the backfield, though. He doesn't scramble for a first, but he does get the last laugh by evading the blitz and getting beyond the line of scrimmage. Here's third and three. They go play action. Winston. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. And that'll bring up fourth down on the big sack with a loss of five. Chalk that one up to bad acting, I guess, because they certainly failed to sell the handoff, and the pressure stayed keyed in on the quarterback. No Oscar awards for this offense, just a loss of yardage. Here's Dustin Hopkins now to try the field goal. On the right hash, officially this will be a 51-yard attempt. And that is no good. Oh, he missed it just wide of the upright, and this will remain an 11-point spread. Now, Charles, all things considered, I guess that's not a critical miss at this stage, is it? No, but still everything helps when you're trying to finish off a ball game. And you're right, not critical in terms of the scoreboard and the team, but the guy with the golden foot... He knows he's only as good as his last kick. Herbert and the Chargers now with a first and 10 at the 41-yard line. He'll start with a handoff to Dobbins. 
And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. 122 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. Here's Herbert. He'll get this over the middle here to Palmer. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and that'll bring up second down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they've put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Herbert now. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. It's been clear in this matchup which side has been the more physical one. It's been this defense. And here's another example on that last play. The Chargers on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This time it's third and three. Play action. It's Herbert. And he's going to be taken down back around the 35-yard line. Dalvin Tomlinson drops him for a four-yard loss there, and that brings up fourth down. And this dominant defensive performance continued on that play. This poor quarterback has not received the protection he needs and has had to pick himself up off the turf far too often. Cameron Dicker on now to try the field goal. He's going to need a little mustard on this one. It will be a 51-yard attempt. And this one is right through. And that'll make this an eight-point game. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. Here's Dicker now as he'll send this one away. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. The Browns offense heading back out to take possession. Their lead back down to one score after the field goal a moment ago, so they'll be looking to string together a few first downs, likely on the ground as they begin first and 10. On play action, Winston. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. I do think it's fair to say that they were caught off guard a little bit when he decided not to throw it on first down. But give him credit. They recovered in time to deny him the first down yardage. But it's only second and short. So that run is still likely to lead to a new set of downs. Going out wide, finds Chubb. Able to get the one yard he needed, but nothing more. Well, that was a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that, second and manageable? Smart play, too. Didn't force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down, let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. They'll try and wind down some clock with Chubb. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. They run it again with Chubb. And able to get a couple as he's across the 40 to the 41. You'll forgive me if I get excited about what we just saw there, won't you? I know I'm supposed to be neutral here, but those were terrific plays back-to-back -back defensively. They know what the mission is. They've got to force a punt here if they want to have a chance to win the game. They absolutely do. Steps one and two done. Now they need this third step. 
from the gun, Winston. And that's to the left sideline and incomplete. Critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. The Chargers offense and their big play wideout getting ready to get back to work. And he's looking to finish strong. He has been the star of the show as they have just had absolutely no answers for him defensively. The Charger drive about to get going. Well, the defense got its job done, forcing the punt. Now the formula pretty simple. They need to find the end zone here. A field goal doesn't help them much. So many offenses want to include their running backs into their passing offense and be able to swing the ball out or check it down to them. But sometimes those guys are just not as comfortable catching the ball as they are running it. Second and ten. Justin Herbert looking to pass. Throw left side is hauled in by Palmer. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. fourth quarter down to the final two minutes and we've got a one score game so it's charger football as we welcome you back from the two minute warning they come up on a first and ten desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive I don't know that those medium five-ish yard gains are going to do it right now probably should have dropped it right yeah that way you save more time on the clock but I know receivers they think they can catch it and break a tackle and turn it into a big gain They'll come up now on second down. Herbert. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. Couple extra defensive backs out there in the dime. And because of that, really not many places to throw the football, if any. And typically, what would you want to do against that dime? Run the football. You want to run the ball, but you can't do it in this situation. Not nearly enough time on the clock. You have to really navigate against a tough defense presented against you. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. Herbert short throw underneath to Hurst sometimes it's hard to figure but you can live with incompletions in this situation you can't live with these short gains that take time off the clock you know who loves it this defense second down eight yards to go throwing Herbert throw over the middle and it's caught by Johnston now the Chargers will use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just over a minute to go in the game. Well, this crowd trying to force a false start here. Third and inches. Herbert to throw. That's to the sideline and incomplete. Partner, they've got one chance left to keep this one going. And I think for you and me, let's think along with their offensive coordinator now. Has to think back, cycle through every play of this contest, and remember what's worked and what has it. Because right here, he needs the best play of the game in order to keep this one alive. 
He's got his target. That's complete. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Felt compelled to go for it there on fourth down, trailing in the fourth quarter. They got it done. And there's always a lot of pressure on a fourth down call. Doesn't matter the distance. You still have to get it done, as you noted, and they did. Final minute, one timeout remaining. First and ten. That's going to be caught. It's Palmer. And he's into the end zone. No flags. It's a touchdown. And now a two-point conversion. And we'll be tied here in the final minute. Do they have one big call left? Here we go. The touchdown's massive. But now they've got to have two to possibly take this to overtime. Listen to this crowd now. Their guys need a stop on this two-point conversion. They'll try and run it in. And he is not going to reach the goal line. They were forced to go for it down two, but the defense rises to the occasion, and they hold on to their lead. So with under 30 seconds to play, this is the game right here. And this will be recovered by the Browns' hands team, and that should just about write a finish to this one. And that's why you have your hands team out there on the field. Those are the best guys ready to make that play. And let's face it, it was executed well. It wasn't a bad kick. It wasn't anything like that. Just that the normal outcome actually came to play. Analytics would tell you it's a very low possibility of getting the ball for the team kicking it in an onside kick situation. You're all about the numbers, aren't all you? All about the numbers, baby. It's a new game now. They don't lie. The Browns in victory formation now as they take the knee. Chargers going to use their third and final timeout as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in the game. Winston will kneel down, and that should be your ball game. Well, taking that knee, maybe just a sigh of relief. They withstood a big fourth quarter comeback. Able to hold on, though. Certainly looked like they had things going their way, didn't it? In the fourth quarter, they had to just hold on. As you said, furious assault on them, but they were able to get it done, take a knee, and head to the locker room with a win. A couple more minutes, and maybe the outcome of this one, Charles, would have been different. But ultimately, time runs out on the comeback, so it falls short. And they hold on to win this by just one possession. Not the fourth quarter they wanted, but they did earn the win, and they'll be happy about that, and they should be. Now they're going to go back to practice, see what they can do to prevent a future lead from slipping away like this one was. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gauden. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. It's a win for the Browns, and they're happy in the dog pound, as we say so long from Cleveland.